Well, let's take another dive back into Philippians. Uh, we're still in chapter one and just looking at the last full paragraph of uh, chapter one. And so let's just read it together. Paul says, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your opponents. We had said that Paul is preparing them to be without him. He's imprisoned. He's facing the severest of threats. And so he's saying, if I come to you, great. Remember we said that if, if I'm allowed to live, that's for Christ. But if I die, it's gain. So um, he's able to be at home with Christ and, and freed from uh, the burdens and the pressures and all the things that he's enduring in ministry. But now he's encouraging the Philippian believers to, to understand that this isn't just one of those things like as long as we all just squeak in, we're okay. He says, I want your manner of life to be worthy of something. I, I want you to strive to, to understand that the gospel by which we've been called is one of sacrifice, one of surrender, one of hardship and difficulty. So, so prepare yourself to walk in, in a manner worthy of that calling. And so he, he, he's laying out the charge of, of a high cost. And I've been really challenged with this lately. Uh, somebody had said something in, in something I was reading or listening to or something where they had just asked the question, what has your faith cost you lately? And they had boiled that down to the fact that that is a key missing ingredient in the culture of church today is that we so rarely think that our faith should cost us anything in terms of difficulty or hardship or setback. We have really probably more sublimely than we realized bought the notion that if we believe in Jesus, everything's supposed to be going well for us. Now, I don't think that you necessarily believe that, at least not in a way that you and I would readily admit. But it shows up in ways and our reaction to the difficulties that happen. Paul is saying, get ahead of this, have the mindset that would be worthy of it. And really what that's getting at is similar to what we've been talking about in First Peter, which is a mindset of expectation. Don't be caught off guard by this. Instead, seek it and embrace it because you want to be counted as those who are worthy of carrying the name of Jesus Christ and living that gospel life. This is a very key thing in terms of uh, getting the right start to uh, not just our day, but just the rest of our life. We have no guarantee as to how any of this is going to go any day, whether there's a pandemic or a, a phony one or a real one, or whether or not any of this is ever going to lighten up or get worse or any of those. None of those things are guaranteed to us. The one thing that is, is that we are called to live a life worthy of the gospel. And it starts in the day to day. We won't get better at the big things until we learn to master the little things. And for me, I'm not sure if it's the same with you, but for me, it starts with whether or not I anticipate and welcome the hardships in life as the thing that makes me worthy to carry the name of Jesus Christ. Not to prove to him that I'm worthy of his salvation, because I'm not, but to walk in fellowship and in full step with him, letting his name be the mark over my life as opposed to any of my successes or comforts or experiences. So that's what I'm praying for you guys today, and I hope that that's a, an encouraging thought for you for the remainder of your day. God bless you, and we'll see you again next time.